Now we are going to discuss about transport and warehousing. So for a retailer, transportation is very important. Is a transportation is the key also, and at the same time warehousing because either as a retailer he is going to warehouse centrally, decentrally, and what are the different aspects which the retailer should keep into consideration. Now we need to see there are different questions which is more relevant to it. Let us discuss one by one by one. So first of all, the retailer will see how often will merchandise be shipped to the retailer. So the first part, how frequently the retailer will get the products from the for for example from the supplier. So it is would be different for every supplier. If the products will be delivered maybe from other city, if the product will be delivered maybe from other country, if the product will be delivered maybe from other territory. So depending on the nature of the product, how frequently the retailer will get the product. So it has to be clearly defined to the system at the time of registering a supplier. It has to be delivered, it has to be clearly mentioned that how frequently in a week, in a month, the supplier will deliver these products to the uh, retailer. For example, if it is about the fresh uh, fruits, if it is about the fresh meat, if it is about uh, the anything which is more fresh, which is required maybe daily or maybe twice a day. So in this case, what would be the frequency, how a supplier is going to deliver, how frequently at what time the supplier is going to deliver. So it would be different supplier by supplier, but it should be addressed immediately. Second is about how will small order quantities should be handled. Again, if for example, you have a retailer has ordered to the supplier, but it is not a big quantity, it is a small quantity because it is your requirement, the small quantity. So it should be addressed at any point of time, at, especially at the time of contract, that how these small quantities if should be identified. Normally, I have seen the practice that minimum order quantity, which is MOQ, is defined at the time of the contract. That what should be the minimum order? If the minimum order is, let's say, 5 units or 10 units or a pack or a carton, then accordingly, this the retailer has to comply that. So all the minimum uh, quantities, the it should be uh, addressed properly at the time of contract and of course on the basis of the requirement. So the third question is about what shipper will be used. So what kind of uh, shipping mod will be used? It will be by air, it will be by a uh, train, it will be by bus, it will be by a uh, shelf carrier, it would be. So what should be the mod? Because again, it depends the product quality. It is. It will result into the product timely availability for every single thing. So this should be clearly identified, agreed between the supplier, between the shipper, and between the retailer. Next question is about what transportation form will be used. Very clearly, you have to spell out which type, for example, of vehicle you will use. If it is fresh product, so you have to clearly identify, clearly define that maybe you will be needing temperature controlled vehicle. For example, if you if you see practically countries like Pakistan, agar aapko, let's say, uh, meat ko ship karna hai, meat ko kahin send karna hai from the uh, butcher sh shop to the butcher shop, then ultimately you have seen practically ke wo gada gaadiyon ke upar, goda gaadiyon ke upar, riksha ke upar, wo deliver ho ra hota hai. But for a retailer who is going to do this complete HSCCP and complete protocol, uske liye kya zaruri hai ke he needs the delivery of the products in the temperature control vehicle. So what transportation will be used for what product and which form it has to be clearly discussed, defined, agreed with the supplier. Then are multiple forms required? So again, different types to deliver this product, different forms to uh, deliver the product would be available. For example, if you are looking for urgently some product, then maybe some other medium would be and if you are looking for a product to be get delivered in a normal time, so what medium uh, would be used? So there has to be a flexibility for different mediums. Then what are the special consideration for perishable and expensive product? For example, especially I normally give an example of, let's say if you are going to deliver, let's say some mobiles. So is are perishable products, also expensive products, and of course easy to steal, easy to thief, theft. So in this case, you have to easily clearly identify that what kind of transportation, what method you will use. 
also for the perishable for fruits for vegetables for meat for all such things you have to clearly identify it what kind of vehicle what consideration you have to do special mark what temperature uh, guidelines you have to follow and what type of vehicle you will use for the purpose then is about how often will special shipping arrangements be necessary so for example if you have promotion on some articles of course that promotion will not last for let's say 12 months it will last for example for few weeks or maybe a month so in this case how frequently you will be needing some special arrangements because if you are looking for special arrangements uh, 365 days in a year not possible for the supplier supplier will never be able to fulfill or commit any such special arrangement so it is always defined while having the agreement or consensus between supplier and the retailer that what would be the frequency of this special arrangements how frequently you will ask me to do that favor so if i am going to do that favor let's document that favor so that everyone should know it then how are shipping terms negotiated with the suppliers so shipping terms should be negotiated should be in the favor of the retailer should be in the favor of the supplier so it has to have the uh, win win situation because if the supplier will deliver more frequently of course his shipping cost will increase of course his cost will increase because that is more effective efficiently is more effective for the retailer but if the retailer will keep inventory for the longer period of time it is harmful for him so you have to make a balance between the two then what delivery options will be available for the retailer's customer so for example if there is any customer who is going to uh, bring that product to his home for example a person a customer who has bought refrigerator from the retail store and now he is going to deliver that product take his product to the home then will that product uh, there is some facility available will there is some solution transportation solution available so that the customer can take this product to his home easily so customer delivery solutions should be addressed properly that is also the main component of it so now we have discussed about the transportation and warehousing transportation and warehousing is the key the customer has to see about what warehousing solution you have to do what transportation solution have to follow so let me discuss with you one example of it also about the specially about the central warehousing so what the major retailers do normally they have a central warehouse they ask supplier to deliver products to that uh, central location and then from central location they deliver they disperse to the different retail stores to so store 1 to store 2 to store 3 so to different stores normally they deliver to the central warehouse it is more effect uh, effective and efficient way of uh, delivering the product because now you have the product you have the stock available into the warehouse you charge supplier for that warehousing you charge supplier for that uh, delivery from the warehouse to the store ultimately supplier will pay for it but then you can easily remove your gaps you can easily eliminate your uh, gaps you can easily improve your shelf availability and that is only possible if you have the central warehousing but of course you need to have multiple stores for it you need to have such scale for it you need to have such business for it otherwise supplier will not give you that facility and suppliers will not pay for it